Good afternoon, everyone. This is Marian. Hello, Jackie Chong again. Greetings to foreign buddies around the world and all Chinese friends. Hope all of you are nothing wrong with the COVID-19 virus. Today, we are going to present your LiDAR survey job case from FIA to office. Due to the time limit and the rainy season, we have recorded the field work part. After that, we will show you how we handle the data. Shall we begin now, Jackie? Why not? So, 1 to 500 topography with UAV-based LiDAR survey. Let's go video. Hello, Jackie! Hi, Maureen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the site. Uh, yeah. Hey, say hello, hello to Maureen. Hi. How are you doing? Uh, just fine. Okay. So you are coming for the global live show with our profit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, our survey live show is very hot in China. And we would like to see how our ZLab team accomplish a LiDAR survey job. Would you please introduce something about this mission? Mm, sure. Well, it's a 1 to 500 uh, topography okay. survey work um, for rural railway development. Ah, okay. We are now situated in Zhengcheng District, mm -hmm. um, Guangzhou. Okay. And the survey zone is between two local villages here, okay. uh, Dengshan Sun and Xunai Sun. Ah, okay. uh, the two villages mm -hmm. are actually four kilometers away mm -hmm. in linear distance. Yeah. But there's no direct roadway in between. Oh, so okay. the villagers have to travel a very long way mm -hmm. by taking a very big U-turn like ah. this. Okay. to meet each other uh-huh uh, you know it takes almost one hour even more than that mm -hmm. by the car by car uh, it, oh my god too too long time for the four kilometers i mean but how did you know it will take one hour or even longer time for that uh, u-turn you know this is fly number two mm -hmm. uh, we got fly number one in the other part of the zone mm -hmm. actually in the other village okay. i mentioned before um here the local government mm -hmm. like to the decided to um develop country roads to make shortcuts for the villagers mm -hmm. okay yeah you see here mm -hmm. um the vertical high drop is more than 100 meters mm -hmm. uh, in such a small area mm -hmm. uh, just 23 hectares mm -hmm. uh, but you see here elevated and vegetated okay uh -huh. so we got the job and confirmed with the employer about our technical proposal mm -hmm. now we're here oh what's that about uh, it's our workmate okay uh, it's a uav like a base liner system Okay. Uh, this time we use a R1350 light. Uh-huh. Um look, this is scanner part, scanner ah, part. Scanner part. Okay. And in the back, mm -hmm. we have IMU and GPS modules inside. Okay. The scanner measures 500,000 scans per second mm -hmm. and its maximum uh, measuring range is 1350 meters. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh, a very powerful one. I mean, it's the measuring accuracy is mm -hmm. 5 to 10 millimeters, okay. a very powerful one mm -hmm. with a single beam, a multi echo technology, mm -hmm. and remarkable measuring range. Mm -hmm. Right? And yeah. then the GPS and IMU module mm -hmm. will help us to record uh, aerial positioning information mm -hmm. um, as well as the mobile careers orientations of okay. the UAV, mobile career, right? Orientations like um, uh, pitch, mm -hmm. row, and heading oh, okay. uh, and of course different levels of uh, IMU will provide different grades of uh, uh, accuracy mm -hmm. right that's why uh, we better find high quality IMU to match this high precision scanner oh, okay. uh -huh. mm -hmm. when all these three sensors are integrated into a LiDAR system mm -hmm. uh, I mean like this one yeah mm -hmm. um, we can expect uh, the laser point cloud accuracy around 10 mm -hmm. centimeter at 300 meter fly altitude. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, the other sensor will be the camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, sometimes camera. inbuilt, sometimes yeah. sometimes uh, attached. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, normally, normally we use uh, a smaller lighter mm -hmm. R250. Oh, R250. Okay. Yeah. Um, but this time mm -hmm. we use a 
the bigger size one with another hexacopter. Yeah. Uh, also, the drone is bigger, right? With this drone, uh, we can carry uh, the bigger size LiDAR mm -hmm. and fly around 45 minutes. Oh, excellent. So we can enjoy um, longer endurance, mm -hmm. um, bigger coverage, oh. and higher efficiency. Okay. Yeah. So uh, is this model uh, carried with other career uh, performance uh, platforms? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, now it goes with a uh, multi rotor mm -hmm. and it can be also working with a uh, VTOL fixed wing. Yeah. Right? And then still main aircraft like helicopter. Yeah. Uh huh. Then number four, mm -hmm. uh, SUV based automobile mode yeah. is possible too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's uh, oh, keep okay. it okay, okay. I think it's almost ready to fly. Whoa. Yeah, keep it away. Ah, let's get here. Okay. Whoa! Hello. 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 Flight number two, we can capture all of mm -hmm. the area. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like our slogan, fly or drive, map 3D map. Mm. <laughs> You're right, okay. you know it. Uh, and uh, many people want to know the uh, output accuracy. So what's your idea about it? Mm, it's a good question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, mm -hmm. um, the precision and accuracy of the laser scanner should yeah. count. Uh, with the Regal single beam um, survey grade sensor, mm -hmm. we can expect one centimeter in accuracy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, the IMU, the yeah. quality of IMU and GPS module, mm -hmm. uh, and the system integration are very important. Mm -hmm. The integration techniques will lead to some system errors, more or less. Yeah, then affect the output accuracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why. That's why uh, the system calibration by the factory is a must. Mm -hmm. Still, the fly altitude, the fly heights, result in um, the scanning range, scanning distance. Mm -hmm. The lower you fly, right? Yeah. And then the shorter distance it scans, and then the better accuracy we can expect. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I in see. China, we have our national. Yeah. Uh, we have our national standards or mm -hmm. say specifications mm -hmm. for different mapping scales against 1 to 500 there should be at least 16 points per square meter mm -hmm. uh, and then for 1 to 1000 scale mm -hmm. there should be at least 4 points mm -hmm. per square meter oh, uh -huh. I see. so uh, it depends uh, you know here you, you see the convex terrain yeah, here right yeah. elevated and vegetated mm -hmm. it Everybody knows that it's hard to obtain a high pond density yes. in such an area. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's also difficult for other survey methodologies, mm -hmm. right? Um, pond density is another critical one. The more true and accurate ground points we can collect, the better ground surface we can reconstruct. And then finally, mm -hmm. uh, the manual intervention mm -hmm. uh, in the post-processing like uh, pond cloud classification and uh, vectorized mapping uh, will inevitably cause further errors mm -hmm. uh, so experience means a lot more in this section mm -hmm. yeah okay well back to the topic mm -hmm. uh, basically speaking the output accuracy of lidar survey uh, is closely related mm -hmm. to all the five factors mentioned before yeah yeah um, and normally we say uh, lidar survey brings us uh, centimeter level accuracy mm -hmm. um, sometimes uh, five to ten and sometimes uh, ten to twenty mm -hmm. uh, or even lower depends so we have to see uh, case to case yeah uh, but when you expect Mm -hmm. um, well, when you when you expect um, both accuracy and efficiency, I think 
LiDAR will be a very good option. Yeah, yes. Oh, oh, it's okay. Are you okay? Okay, okay. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Ah, <laughs> terrible. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, so, um, let's say mm. a sizable area. Yeah. Uh, difficult terrain, and then accurate data. Go fast. Mm -hmm. No better option but LiDAR. Oh, fantastic. Seems that LiDAR is very powerful in the survey work. Mm. So, do you think LiDAR is the best equipment in geospatial industry nowadays? Mm. Ah, mm -hmm. fantastico. Yeah. It's a funny question, Marine. <laughs> I like it. Um, according to me, mm -hmm. there's no mm -hmm. the best equipment in yeah. the absolute sense. Mm -hmm. but there is always the best solution mm -hmm. to a specific case. Uh -huh. So when the most uh, cost-effective solution yeah. um, can balance your time, mm -hmm. balance your cost, mm -hmm. and satisfy all the job needs, mm -hmm. we will say it's the best solution mm -hmm. for this job, yeah. a particular job. Mm -hmm. Okay? You know, upon a new survey job, mm -hmm. um, we we need to look into several issues. Yes. Yeah. Be before we we go, or before we do the job, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, such as um, let's say um, accuracy expectation. Yeah. Um, output demand, mm -hmm. and then submission deadline, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, terrain conditions, of course. Sure, sure. And blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Look. The drone is passing overhead and the LiDAR is capturing data in its mission. Some survey jobs mm -hmm. will be in the city, yeah. in the town. Yes. Most probably you mm -hmm. take a uh, total station mm -hmm. or RTK or terrestrial laser scanner mm -hmm. or other equipment. Because you can access to most of the places um, you wish. Right? Yeah. But what if you are going to challenge uh, those inaccessible areas with uh, dense vegetations, mm -hmm. right? In the tall, in the high mountains and, and, and hills, this and that, right? It's terrible, not easy, mm -hmm. right? And your clients always call and push, 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 quick, 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 quick result, mm -hmm. quick data, yeah. right? Yes. And uh, still, they demand. Um, highly accurate DEM, contours, vectorized map, and even offer photo. Well, what will you do? What do you think? It's not easy. Mm -hmm. So, no better option but LiDAR, I think. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. You're right, you're right. Um, uh. When we, when we uh, got this job case, mm -hmm. uh, you see, you see the, the, the Ter complex terrain here, mm -hmm. right? It's hard to climb the mountain. Just now, I even sleep, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Um, it's hard to go inside the forest to mm -hmm. to do do the work, mm -hmm. and then it's hard to obtain RDK fixed solutions mm -hmm. uh, uh, under the dense canopies. Mm -hmm. Here is bare. It's easy. Would you like to climb up, 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 right? No. It's hard to uh, collect sufficient data mm -hmm. against one to five hundred mm -hmm. uh, mapping scale. Not worsely. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, not easy, man. Mm -hmm. And then, so when you take a job like this, mm -hmm. yeah, easy job not for you, mm -hmm. right? Difficult job. <laughs> so, no better option but LiDAR. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You know, the laser scans, I mean from the LiDAR, from mm -hmm. the laser scanner. The laser scans help us to penetrate, mm -hmm. to penetrate between the gaps of the... The gaps between tree branches uh -huh. and leaves. Yeah. And then reach the ground. Oh. reach the ground and obtain the ground points data good true and accurate oh excellent uh -huh. and then you know just in a single day mm -hmm. right we came this morning yeah. right we came this morning 
Uh, one fly there, one fly here. Mm -hmm. We almost finished. We finished the data capture. Right? Yeah. Um, in my word, mm -hmm. short but sharp. Yeah. I mean, short time, yeah. but sharp data. Yes, yes, you're hey, right. Can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine how long it will take to do ground survey uh, in the forest with mm -hmm. RDK? Can you? Mm -hmm. uh, much, much longer, I'm sure. Yeah. You're right, you're right. Uh, with slide assistance, we are able to deal with uh, more challenging work. Uh, uh, it, it's very efficient. And uh, but what if uh, I mean buyers team uh, cannot handle the hardware, oh. the hardware operations or software processing, even after the training program. Yeah, my own step. Oh, thank you. Mm. And I mean, it's not easy to learn or remember at all, mm. and it's common to everyone, right? Mm. So, what do you think? Uh huh. Um, I can't agree more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not easy to learn at the beginning. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, actually, that was one of the most uh, frequently asked questions from our clients. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know, when we manage capture massive data yeah. from field work, mm -hmm. right? And do much faster compared with ground survey. Yes. I think we do need some time, right? We do need some time in the post processing, mm -hmm. right? And I believe it's a fair game, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah? Um, LIDAR uh, using Remote sensing technology, mm -hmm. uh, unlike ground survey, mm -hmm. uh, measuring point by point, right? LiDAR using remote sensing technology mm -hmm. uh, collects um, trillions or yeah. even zillions of points all together. Wow. Yeah. Big number. So, all those points, mm -hmm. what to, how to? Some points are wanted, yeah. like the ground points. Yes. But some are not, like the vegetation or buildings, mm -hmm. right? So we have to classify the pond cloud mm -hmm. and remove all those unwanted points, mm -hmm. right? That represent uh, the ground objects, mm -hmm. right? Like the cars, mm -hmm. yeah, it's moving one, right? It doesn't represent the earth. Yes. Uh, um, and some points represent um, the trees, mm -hmm. vegetations, and those buildings, yeah. right? After we remove all of them, and mm -hmm. then we can generate uh, the highly accurate DM and contours, mm -hmm. right? On the other hand, mm -hmm. uh, the laser laser gravimetric vector mapping mm -hmm. uh, is a bit labor intensive. Yes. Yeah, and I'm sure you need some time. You you need to learn. You have to learn and spend some time on it. Mm -hmm. Right, it messed some some time in it. Yeah, um, maybe some beginners uh, will feel it difficult, hesitant to buy. Yeah, they they say, "Wow, your workflow includes several steps, mm -hmm. several steps, this and that. How come? How to? Mm -hmm. Okay, right? Quite some buyers mm -hmm. think like this, and they show us their worries. Mm. You know what we did? You know what we did? You know? Show yes. me, show me, please. Uh huh. Since we have uh, plenty of uh, survey jobs uh, here and there, home and abroad, right? We would invite our clients mm -hmm. uh, to the sites. Yeah. Um, maybe in China or maybe overseas. It depends. Depends on the distance and depends on the schedule. We'll get them um, into our actual LiDAR survey work. Right, going with our uh, experienced uh, fieldwork team, mm -hmm. they may easily understand more about how to challenge different terrains and conduct the whole, the entire workflow um, with with us. Mm -hmm. Right, and suppose they could stay 
a bit longer with us. Mm -hmm. we, we may even guide them. We may even guide them and show them how to process the data mm -hmm. and generate the results as desired by the employer, mm -hmm. right? No simulation, mm. no simulation, but all reality, 100% hardcore. So is it uh, more practical for them to learn? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yes, it's a good idea, feasible and practical, as we do have plenty of survey services running in the year. Another thing, uh, most of people are interested to know how to verify your output accuracy and prove your results for acceptance. Ah, good question again, Marianne. Uh, you know, in principle, we, you, you just use an old methodology mm -hmm. to verify the results from the new. Uh, like what we did a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. using total station to check GPS results. Mm -hmm. Ah, look! You know yeah, I see. what they are doing the, about? One of them is uh, taking, is uh, doing an uh, RTK uh, survey and the other is taking pictures. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, one told me that uh, we don't need any ground control points in LiDAR mm -hmm. survey. But why your team doing such measurement, point by point? Correct. They are doing RTK survey, point by point. Yes. But such measurements mm -hmm. are mainly considered as checkpoints in our workflow. In other words, they are not uh, gonna be used as tie points and improving the final output accuracy in the way of photogrammetry. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So we just use them to compare in our laser point cloud. As long as the laser point cloud is okay, mm -hmm. no problem, um, accurate enough so we may expect very nice output because all the outputs uh, will come from the raw data raw data is the fundamental of all upcoming approaches mm -hmm. for your information uh, we manage to achieve the accuracy expectation mm -hmm. and satisfy the job needs mm -hmm. in the past few years from our jobs a lot a lot okay uh, could you please uh, tell me more about the past job cases Jackie mm, okay um, you know China is our home market yeah right so we receive uh, survey service inquiries from time to time here yes uh-huh and you know South group is trying every best mm -hmm. to transform from a survey equipment manufacturer mm -hmm. and a GIS solution provider to a geospatial data engineering and application specialist. Uh, um, apart from the routine operations in China, we also got some survey jobs in the foreign countries like uh, Cambodia, Malaysia, Indonesia, Myanmar, in Asia. And then also some in Africa like um, Cameroon, uh, Berlin, um uh, blah 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 so we are proud of our uh, few proven solutions mm -hmm. and project-based learnings well you know such lidar survey jobs include um topography mm -hmm. cadaster power lines management um forestry investigation um uh, rose mm -hmm. scanning mm -hmm for uh, SPU survey mm -hmm. or a set inventory and uh, ah, blah 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 mm -hmm. plenty more come on <laughs> Jackie you're quite an expert in LiDAR survey now <laughs> not really but thank you Marine um, but I'm sure mm -hmm. we have so many experts in the ZLab team they know much more than I do you know why because um, they're always in honeymoon Honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, honeymoon. Honeymoon with a number of uh, product studies mm -hmm. and uh, deep applications. I mean, site knowledge mm -hmm. and project experience, job experience, mm -hmm. right? Uh, site knowledge and job experience help much better in the actual survey work. Mm -hmm.
uh, compared with the goddamn textbooks or user manuals, I suppose. Ha. Uh -huh. I believe our Z Lab team did a very good job. Uh, practice makes perfect, and mm. the time will tell. Yeah, exactly. I can agree more. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Rome was not built in a day, mm -hmm. right? Uh, not about the epidemic. Mm -hmm. uh, and the existing team building from us uh, results from years of continuous hard work. Thanks to the top management, uh, I mean, thanks to the support from our top management and also the support from our dear clients, we got so many opportunities to practice, to learn and see. So, you mm. came late, we almost <laughs> call it a day. Yeah, what a pity. I came so late and it's already the end of the job. I have a question. How long will it take for our ZLab team to submit all the deliverables? Mm, deliverables? Yeah, yeah. That's the key. Mm -hmm. uh, you see here, 23 mm -hmm. hectares, yeah. almost 90% vegetational cover. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't have a lot of ground objects to vectorize and put into the map. Mm -hmm. According to my experience, mm -hmm. uh, our colleagues need maximum two days uh, for the point cloud classification, mm -hmm. DEM generation, and offer photo map production. Still, they need another two days mm -hmm. for the vectorized mapping. Mm -hmm. Those small size, quite a few uh, ground features mm -hmm. to be presented and vectorized against one to 500 uh, mapping scale, mm -hmm. right? Um, let's say also one day here. Mm -hmm. So in total, mm -hmm. uh, within four to five days, we can complete all. That's oh, a, bravo! A... One more question. Many clients even asked me before whether we could provide a data processing service individually. Mm. So you mean... Oh. Excuse me. It's okay. Why? Mm, 对, 我们在现场, mm, Fangxin, Fangxin. Kaida, me want Okay, mm, 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 mm. bye bye. It's from the client. <laughs> Pushing you, alright. Mm, mm, okay. 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 Uh, uh, the question uh, is provide the data processing so service. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, so. My answer is yes, possible. Actually, we started this type of service before. Okay. Uh huh. Um, you know, uh, some of our colleagues mm -hmm. used to work in the professional data processing service companies committed yeah. to laser point cloud applications for yes. quite long. Mm -hmm. Some of them with 10 years and some of them even nearly 20 years. Okay. So I'm sure we got a very capable team to mm -hmm. handle the data. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm. In my word, mm -hmm. in my word, our colleagues are really uh, side genius and data <laughs> monsters, you know. Yeah, funny word, side genius and data monsters. Mm -hmm. Another side? Yeah. yeah, let's see. Come and have a look. Okay. This is our R250, a smaller LiDAR oh. with the M600 DJI matrix. Okay. Uh, usually we call it a star LiDAR solution. Mm -hmm. We take two sets here, one for sender capture, mm -hmm. another set for uh, backup or practice. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, suppose the area size is small, we will capture two groups of data, two groups of data. Mm -hmm. um, and then we compare the accuracy, we compare the efficiency, right? Sometimes by high or low, depends, right? Mm -hmm. This is the way how we improve our, let's say, how mm -hmm. we improve our workflow or, or a team. Mm -hmm. team Teamwork. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jackie, can you here, please? Okay, let's see something new. Hey, Marine, look. This is a point cloud we generated mm -hmm. uh, from the first flight. There, we also got some uh, GCPs there. Let's mm -hmm. see. Next piece. Okay, GCP here. Mm. What for? What for, mm -hmm. right? We import the GCP into the software mm -hmm. and then we can generate the control report. Mm -hmm. uh, from the control report, we can tell the deviations mm -hmm. uh, between uh, laser point cloud mm -hmm. and uh, ground survey by RTK. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, I think this is okay. See? Mm -hmm. Below 5 centimeters. 
Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Excellent. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you for your abundant information. I think I've learned a lot today. Yeah. Welcome, Marine. We yeah. I hope you enjoy your day. Yeah. Our ZLab team is always standby and ready to help. Yeah. But now we are ready to go. <laughs> Go home la. Let's go back and see how to process the data. Okay. Right. Sayonara, camera. <laughs> see you soon, my friends. Welcome back. We are now indoors. Because of the rain and the time limit, we just recorded a few work part. Mm -hmm. So it's time to process the data, right? Bingo. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Please pay attention to the top. That's the complete workflow, like a progress bar, right? From left to right, one to eight, eight steps in total, roughly speaking. And below, that's the background information of the survey job. Hey guys, I'm not going to read everything on the slides because I'm sure you are smart enough uh, to understand all my literatures easily. Uh, Instead, I would like to tell you something behind for more hidden messages, okay? On our side, first of all, the processing team need to have a general idea of the job information. Let's say, to study this and that document, uh, to be sure of the employer's requirements, right? And also communicate with the fieldwork teams uh, about their side stories as well. Uh, for example, the processing team uh, will advise the fieldwork guys about um, reasonable flight heights against different um, terrains based on their point density output uh, experience. Uh, the box here shows their side tips, I mean side notes, like bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have a question. Mm. It's not always to have the same team to capture the data and then process, yes or no? Yes. For higher work efficiency, uh, we will split the job into two parts, mm -hmm. field work and processing. Yeah. In that case, each team could be more specialized and just focus on what they're really good at. Mm -hmm. Now, we collect the raw data. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the raw five. data mm -hmm. from the field work team and then continue right here. Okay. And of course, there will be a long list for all the necessary materials, like here, uh, and those mentioned in the previous slide. Then the processing team may follow up properly. Wow, it comes with quite a lot of raw data and it seems complicated. Come on, Marianne, mm -hmm. you're just a beginner yeah. right now. Right? You, you, when you get started, mm -hmm. your experience will tell how it works. Mm -hmm. uh, here are the procedures of data production. We just need to follow the requirements by the employer and submit what they need. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, Not yeah. all. Yeah, um, but that's quite a lot indeed. But different clients may have different demands. Not all as always. Yeah, not all as always. Mm -hmm. uh, let's put it in a simple way. Uh, you need more, we do more. And then you pay more, you get more. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Deal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, next, it will be the trajectory data processing. Uh, since we have Novatel IMU inside the LiDAR, we will use software, uh, software from Novatel Inertial Explorer. Uh -huh. See here, uh, we collect IMU data and GPS data from the LiDAR, and then download the base observations from the ground base or coast station. Then we do PPK processing, computation. Uh -huh. Then we, have, we will have the trajectory data, uh, post file, po positioning and orientation system file. Yeah, that's it. And then we go ahead mm -hmm. for the point cloud generation. Okay, this software is developed by our company, right? Yeah, we call it ZLab Point Process. Okay. We can generate uh, geo-reference point cloud and colorize point cloud in it. Uh, for these two steps, I mean uh, trajectory data processing and point cloud generation. Uh, usually it takes 10 to 15 minutes uh, in, uh, for each flight, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, not too long. Okay. Mm -hmm. ZLab, yeah. point process. Yes. 
After that, we have to verify the data quality. And there are four major criteria listed here. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. right? Like drone mapping, um, we have to see whether the capture data has covered the entire mission zone or not. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the section display on the left, right? no stratified point cloud. Uh, um, in other words, no double rooftops, no double rooftops, mm -hmm. and no double uh, ground surfaces. Then accuracy level in the middle, mm -hmm. right? It's below 10 centimeter. I think it's okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. On the right, point density. Now we have 60 points per square meter, mm -hmm. uh, more than enough. Yeah. Right? But uh, what if the data quality is not good? and might not satisfy the mapping scale requirements, yet the field work team has left the site. What mm. will you do? You've got the point, Marine. Yeah. Question go, Marine. It's a very typical question to the project manager. Yes. In our way, uh, we will get our field work team to process the trajectory and point cloud themselves. Mm -hmm. right? As mentioned before, these two steps would not take long. So, they will check all such four items, one, two, three, four, uh, in, on the site. Um, otherwise, it's hard for them uh, to go back and repeat. Yeah, and the processing team will just start with the generated point cloud and go straight. Everything okay, we move on. Yeah. Now, with the geo-reference point cloud, mm -hmm. uh, we have to work on the classification. Uh, you mean to classify the point cloud into different classes? Wanted mm. and unwanted, right? Exactly. For the initial classification, mm -hmm. the essence is about macro algorithm. Mm -hmm. Macro algorithm, mm -hmm. not macro, okay? <laughs> okay? For batch processing. Mm -hmm. Our colleagues will apply different algorithms for different terrains and different tree heights, like uh, forest, mm -hmm. jungle, uh, uh, bushes, etc. Better algorithm uh, will save considerable efforts in the following steps. Mm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. We will work on the auto mosaic that would be used as reference to tell ground objects more easily. Mm -hmm. uh, and the 3.5 centimeter GSD here, see, right? Mm -hmm. It's good enough for our coming 5 centimeter resolution of a photo map production. Ah, it's for this mission? Yep, for oh, this mission, of good, course. Good. Next we will come to the intensive point cloud classification. The algorithm computation could not tell, could not tell the points correctly. So we need to do something manually, by manual efforts, right? That's to restore those wrongly classified points back to what they are supposed to be and remove all those remaining ground object points uh, from the ground class, right? Something like uh, plus or minus. Uh, I heard before, it's a bit labor intensive. Mm. How could we do it faster then? Mm. Well, besides the uh, appropriate algorithm, mm -hmm. uh, we need some techniques like uh, deep understandings about software display and the actual environment. Mm -hmm. See here, uh, we need to remove those points that do not belong to the ground, mm -hmm. right? Let's see, example one and two. The mm -hmm. noise points, the building points, they do not do, uh, belong to the ground. Mm -hmm. So we have to pick out and remove, mm -hmm. right? And then example three, bridge. How about the bridge? Mm -hmm. uh, do you think the bridge belongs to the ground, uh, represent the ground or not? Yes. Yes? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, wrong answer this time. <laughs> uh, the bridge is actually um, an architecture, mm -hmm. a building, mm -hmm. right? So we have to remove also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then. On the other hand, uh, we need to re restore those points wrongly put into other classes, the scarp points and the mountain body points, right? Uh, we need to restore and keep them there. Yeah, so uh, before and after, mm. look here, yes. look here, yes. right? Uh, those five pictures shows the correct examples. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, little by little, part by part, we may recover what they should be. And then we may expect to obtain better digital terrain model and better digital uh, elevation model. Mm, yep. Okay. Uh, but what if we overlook or ignore some parts in mm. this step? Overlook. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, that's why sometimes we refer to the image mm -hmm. of a photo. 
to see what they are in reality. Look, yeah. Example six, seven, eight, nine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, water resources, uh, sh road shoulders, and bridges. Uh, they belong to the ground, right? We cannot remove. We have to keep. Yeah. Yep. And then um, the vegetation or debris points. We must remove. Mm. Then you see the flat ground surface here. Yes. Yeah. Also, before and after, uh, the pictures below show the correct examples. Mm -hmm. for sh and for sure, our processing team uh, will have a double check by a more experienced guy. Um, let's say by the team leader. Uh, remember Ms. Wang Xiao Li, mm -hmm. uh, who presented in Chinese language last Friday mm -hmm. morning. Yeah, yeah. Wang. Mm -hmm. okay. However, it's manual work. Yeah, we could not guarantee, uh, we could not say 100% correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we must pay full attention to the job. And I'm sure our teamwork, I mean, our team knowledge is good enough to tell what is correct or mm. not. Yes, you're right. Teamwork is the key. Mm. Mm -hmm. And here we have the digital service model. In order to show it more clearly, yeah, our colleagues put it to 0.2 meter resolution instead of 0.5 meter resolution. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Now you may find some veg vegetations, buildings, yeah. right? quite a lot on the ground surface. Yes. Right? We say it digital surface model mm -hmm. with all the ground objects on, uh, on the surface. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. Then based on the efforts of uh, intensive classification, mm -hmm most of the ground points would be kept in the point cloud and for generating the digital elevation model. Like this, mm -hmm. see, all the ground objects were removed yeah. and we got only the bare earth surface there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. like this, yeah. it's from my hand, mm -hmm. now it's bare, yes. but still one more. Yeah. Uh, mm. And that's one of the major outputs in topography. Yeah, DEM yeah. is very critical. Yes, mm. yes. Next, mm -hmm. contour lines, as requested, 50 centimeter interval. Mm -hmm. We may say it quite precise because we got sufficient ground points and the micro expression of the ground surface uh, is perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfecto, you know? But it looks not too smooth. Mm. But that's accurate in Dave, you know. Mm -hmm. It depends for engineering and s and, and, and design works, yeah. the clients, civil engineers, uh, prefer uh, more accurate data. So we would keep it like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but suppose it's useful final output or documentation. We would probably do some more fine editing in CAD software. Okay. Yep. And next, offer photo map. Uh, ST photo in TerraSoli. Yes, we could make full use of the modules, mm -hmm. all modules in uh, TerraSolid. It's mm -hmm. a very powerful software kit uh -huh. for point cloud uh, applications. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, you know, some feature points in the point cloud mm -hmm. will serve as tie points in photogrammetry. Mm -hmm. And it saves our efforts in GCP matching. Ah, got mm. you. By the way, can we use SkyPhoto or other uh, photogrammetry software? SkyPhoto Sky photo is from us. Ah, yes. Uh, yeah. My answer is definitely yes. Mm -hmm. Sky photo, pix 4 d or mm -hmm. photo scan will do. However, in laser grammetry, mm -hmm. offer photo is usually considered as a byproduct, not the major one. Yeah. Mm. Well, it comes to the last but not least part, my friend, okay. vectorized mapping. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to work with ZLab Mapper and CASE, a CAD platform software kit for different vectorizations. Uh, we may vectorize the terrain features based on DSM and DEM, like the ridges, box, bumps, uh, etc. And then we can vectorize uh, the houses, roads, uh, fences, bridges in the pond cloud instead, right? We can even tell the terrestrial lasers, uh, terrestrial boundaries, like uh, farms, houses, um, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, pipes uh, with both DOM and point cloud. Yeah. The vectorized mapping can be split into several teams, I mean, uh, different production lines, just to increase the efficiency. Uh -huh. 
with the help of different software kits, the mapping could be easier. For mm -hmm. instance, uh, the row sign points, the row sign points, okay, uh, might be blocked in the OM because of the trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we can find them in the pond cloud and DEM. Okay. Because laser scans can penetrate the gaps between the tree branches and leaves. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So uh, it's just like the sunlight. Yeah, uh, like sunlight. The laser scans can reach the ground, mm -hmm. and then we can got some. We can get some uh, ground points there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we can vectorize uh, with the laser, the point cloud mm -hmm. instead of uh, DOM only. Point cloud plus DEM uh, instead of DOM only. Yeah. And sometimes we may refer to the DOM, the image, yeah, of a photo, the image, yeah, to see what the ground objects are. You know, there might be some fallen trees. Mm -hmm. uh, the trees fell down and then they lie down on the on, on, on the ground, right? Yeah. Fallen trees, uh, though lying on the ground, but they do not belong to the ground, mm -hmm. right? They are actually, uh, we say, it trashes mm -hmm. or garbage, yeah. right? So in vectorized mapping, we cannot put it. Put it there. We cannot vectorize them as vegetation, mm -hmm. right? So, in one word, we need all such kits mm -hmm. uh, to do our job. Yeah. Zilla Mapper is developed by Sal. Yeah. Another Zilla software yes. kit from from us. Mm -hmm. Users may uh, vectorize ponds, lines, polygons in the two D way, and refer to the left window and vectorize in the right one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the operation will be interactive as it's double screen linkage. For example, we refer to the DSM and vectorize the house in the pond cloud. And on the right, we make a cross section. Cross section. Yeah. Yeah. So rooftop here, mm -hmm. cross section. Uh -huh. For the houses, mm -hmm. then vectorize the boundaries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in photogrammetry, it's hard, you know, the house eaves, uh, I mean the extruding rooftops, mm -hmm. uh -huh, will affect our evaluation and block our vision. You know, yeah. Mostly we will even do some site research, like totalization or RTK survey uh, for the precise house boundaries, right? But now in laser geometry, this part uh, could be really easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for this page, why the point cloud here is displayed in gray color? Um, actually, the mm -hmm. point cloud could be displayed in many modes, okay. in different modes. Uh, by class, mm -hmm. uh, by flat line, mm -hmm. by elevation, by shading, or whatever. Okay. Uh -huh. Here, it's displayed by intensity, and it would be easier to tell the row lines. Display mode uh, option is the magic to show more 3D information with the pond cloud. Okay. Okay. I got you. Then we will vectorize the scalps ridges in software case, a very popular and powerful topographic and cadastral software kit in China. Mm -hmm. Mapping software kit. Yeah. Up to now, 20 years. 20 years of dominance in the market. Case. Yep. Mm -hmm. We may say enjoy. Uh, we may enjoy the feature library mm -hmm. uh, with abundant options, like a, va a variety of uh, rope types, highway, right? And then uh, country road, a city road, or small lanes, path, right? Uh, you have a lot of options. And also we have a variety of uh, house types, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure. All surveyors and civil engineers in China mm -hmm. know about this software very, very well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, case CSS computer aided surveying system. And also, contours could be edited here. Maybe for international market, users can do the same in other CD or micro station platform software because the data formats are compatible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and after an overall check, Overall check, mm -hmm. the deliverables might be ready. For your information, the data process of uh, SUV base, uh, aircraft base, I mean um, helicopter base or manned aircraft, 
and even other platforms is more or less the same. The data processing mm -hmm. uh, more or less the same. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay, for this page, here is the complete workflow from uh, field to office, right? Yes. Okay. I guess everybody could understand better from this simple chart for quick review. Mm -hmm. Many efforts are involved, but once you experience and practice more, the learning curve is just a matter of time, my friend. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. Okay. And next. We'll show you some typical job cases we did before. First one, 1 to 2,000 topography for a large infrastructure, wind power station engineering, Inner Mongolia, China, right? Mm -hmm. 763 square kilometers. Oh. We accomplished the whole job within 30 days. 30 days. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Much faster than expected by the employer. Yeah. They put it to us, 45 days. Mm -hmm. We did it with only 30 days. Yeah. Come on. Helicopter based. Yep, yeah. helicopter based. Second one is about a project of uh, hydropower station development mm -hmm. in Cameroon, Africa. Mm -hmm. There we did both topography and hydrography with full gear of south solution. UAV, see, right? Mm -hmm. And then um, LIDAR, and then USV. Unmanned boat, the same model that being just show us last Friday. Mm -hmm. Actually, the deliverables could be done within one week, but in practice, mm -hmm. it took 20 days. What happened at that time? Nothing wrong, but the poor internet transfer. Oh. You know, p power station site is always uh, far away from downtown, mm -hmm. right? And our field work guys suffered too much. Uh, for the data transfer back to the processing team, mm -hmm. back to the office. Mm -hmm. But that's reality. Mm -hmm. You have to face, you have to challenge, you have to do it. Okay. That was the story. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, next, mm -hmm. uh, laser scanning for power lines inspection and management mm -hmm. due to strong interference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, strong electromagnetic interference. Mm -hmm. It was not good for the UAV base. Mm -hmm. So we did it with helicopter base again. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the output now is different from our routine topography. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see it? Yeah. Uh, it's power lines analysis report. Yeah. Uh, we can tell the damage or uh, damage wires or, or damage parts in the facilities. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can see power lines clearly, in red mm -hmm. ones, yes. Yeah, okay. different, different type, different yeah. outputs from our topography. Yes. Right. Then we have another topography job for mm -hmm. 50 meter kilometer, mm -hmm. 50 kilometer, sorry, uh, highway development. Mm -hmm. Within two hours, just two hours, mm -hmm. we accomplished the data capture. Wow, speedy app. So that's a VTOL fixed wing, right? Yep, mm -hmm. a large size one. Mm longer endurance, mm -hmm. uh, four to six hours. Gasoline type, not battery, uh, not battery type. As you see, we put our LiDAR R1350 light mm -hmm. uh, inside the compartment here in the front, right? Mm -hmm. And we did it with incredibly high efficiency in both field work and processing. Mm -hmm. Field work quick and processing also fast, mm -hmm. right? Only three, four days, we completed all for this 50 kilometers. Come on. Marvelous. I remember aircraft rental service is not available mm. in some countries, according to our clients. So this VTOL fixed mm. wing with long endurance is pretty good to carry the long range LIDAR. Yeah, you've got the point again. Mm -hmm. Question Go Marine is uh, a smart girl indeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With with the VTOL, mm -hmm. uh, longer endurance, uh, we can avoid the troubles, right? In some countries, we don't have the aircraft rental, right? What shall we do? Mm -hmm. So we need uh, better, longer uh, drones mm -hmm. uh, to fly longer, right? And then the next job is about your SUV base, automobile laser scanning. Yeah, that time the client requested Three, three centimeter in elevation, uh, just to compare with the uh, SBU survey data. Uh -huh. uh, that 
And then we had to adjust the trajectory correct correction uh, by some ground control points for high accuracy output. Mm -hmm. See the picture in the middle? Yeah, it's GCP. Yeah, GCP. Mm -hmm. We need them for mm -hmm. uh, correcting the trajectory. Mm -hmm. Why? You know why? See the pictures, see the photo, and also the pond cloud, right? We encounter plenty of tree blocks uh, in most part of the road. So GPS signals were not good, and then the tra trajectory uh, was affected. Uh, we need the GCP and then correct it for much higher accuracy. Yeah, that's it. And the last one here, mm -hmm. power grid engineering topography in Indonesia. I was one of the team there during the Lunar Chinese New Year two months ago. Okay. See the guy in blue in the middle? Yes. That's yes. me. Yeah, that's you. Yeah. In the South Sumatra Island, mm -hmm. tropical forest, you may meet with various, various new friends, like uh, tigers, <laughs> wolves, leeches. During our stay, our team found a few Sumatra tigers mm -hmm. and wolves inside. Mm -hmm. Quite dangerous, you know. Mm. Mm. And even, you know, my friend was even bitten. Mm -hmm. I mean, the surveyor. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend was even bitten by the leeches. A, around eight or nine leeches. Leeches? Yeah, leeches. Not the fruit leeches, but leeches. See? The one in the middle. The one in the middle. Ew. Uh, like something like eel, but shorter. It's itchy, it's oily, uh, it's curly. Eight or nine it leeches went inside his trousers quietly when he was doing articles away, you know. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then he began to bleed a lot, a lot, a lot, you know. Uh, Ew. Oh my God. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Jackie, it's not funny, okay? But is it true? Okay, of course it's it's no fun, I'm sure, but it's true. I was not kidding. Oh. Anyway, the misfortune was gone because we held them out with our UAV-based uh, LiDAR survey, right? Now everything done mm -hmm. uh, with short time, so they don't need to uh, go inside the forest mm -hmm. and measure point by point, mm -hmm. right? Easier, easier. Yes. Yeah. So that's all for the day. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry we don't have enough time mm -hmm. uh, to present every single detail yeah. and show you in the live, mm -hmm. right? But if you are interested in it, uh, just let us know. Mm -hmm. and we then will tell you more about our stories. Mm, <laughs> yep. We are always ready to share our experience mm -hmm. and we would like to learn about your new topics, uh, your demands, this and that, right? Mm, let's see what we can do for you, my friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. That's all? Yeah, <laughs> almost. Let's call it a day. Now is the time. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Thank you so much for staying with us here. Have a nice day and take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.